Hey, welcome to another episode of Spoiler Night from HorribleNight.com. Today we are here to spoil Inside. Uh, I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined tonight by fellow Inside players, Cole Monroe. Hey, what's up? And Aaron McNeil. It's hot outside, so I'm inside, yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought I just bought a Super Nintendo, an NBA Jam, and a box copy of NHL '94. I thought that's what we were going to talk about tonight. Let's talk about that. I don't get the reference. <laughs> no, I literally just did. Here I'm going to show <laughs> oh, a picture. Okay. It's <laughs> real. It's I, real. I was like, did they have a subtitle with the word "inside" in it? Like, like this was ten bucks. <laughs> I, I I know there was a bucks. WWE Inside Your House game. No, just really bought a Super Nintendo. I thought those were the games we were going to talk about. We can do we can do that at a later time. Like, I can't wait to spoil the plot of NHL '94. I can't Inside wait. Inside Edition. Uh, <laughs> what we what we're here to do? Oh, I, I, actually, I I think I might have misspoken. I kind of want to go into our our background of Inside, but I don't think you actually played the game, Aaron. You kind of stumbled across it. No, I was going to, but a whole week went by between that Xbox One and PC release, and I just happened to check it out to see if it was worth buying. And next thing I know, the credits are rolling, and I'm sitting there saying, WTF. <laughs> when I just watched. <laughs> did, you, did you watch it from beginning to end, or did you just kind of st- like stumble in the stream and then realize, oh shit, I st- I've seen some shit, I should, w- I should watch the rest of this shit? I stumbled in, and it's, the shit hadn't started yet, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting, reminds me of Limbo, and mm-hmm. next thing I know, I look back, and stuff's going down. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys know anything about this game? Like, I, I completely forgot about this company until E3 of this year, where they just, yeah. like, had that little aside yeah. during the Xbox conference, and I'm like, oh, okay, I guess they're making a game, and it's out in, like, a week. Yeah, that's where I was at. I was like, what? what is that, and why? Oh, it's coming out next week um and then you know i started hearing about it after that but i guess they released a trailer last e3 sure no idea no idea either don't remember it must have gotten lost in their like their indie montage or something like that but like plus plus limbo was coming out still like on every single (laughs) platform yeah like i think still something it probably came to something this year so mobile wonders yeah i yeah i don't don't (laughs) know i I think it maybe some of that was just messaged better than anything about inside. I don't know, which I'm okay with. Cause like, yeah, plus a surprise. Yeah. I, like I would have been hyped to see what play dead was doing next, but I was gleefully ignorant of this game when it came out so much. So that when I started it, I had no idea how much limbo this game was going to be. <laughs> like I assumed, <laughs> I just assumed, Oh, well they won't like do the same kind of thing. No, they, they did the same kind of thing, but turns out they're really good at doing that kind of thing. It's a weird, strange thing. Yeah, they're like great at doing it. And I think that's what made it so captivating for me and not even buying it to play it, but just watching. Yeah. Did uh, did you know what you were getting into, Cole? Like even from what people were saying? Um, yeah, I think that I had a, kind of had a feeling it was going to be very Limbo-like, and which I, I don't think I ever finished, but I enjoyed what I did play of that. Yeah. Um, so... I was in as soon as I reheard about it, I guess, um, the week did, before E3. Did you beat Limbo, Aaron? Yes. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I beat that. I, re- I remember struggling through the end. I remember it kind of dragging on a bit and uh, um, it kind of becoming a chore by the end, but I was so kind of captivated by it. I had to see it through. So, and that's what that's what always stuck with me from Limbo was like that this was su- it was such a different game, especially at that time. Like I just I always associate it with Summer of Arcade and kind of just the arrival of indie games on consoles and um, mm-hmm. it'll always stick out in my head because of that. But uh, did that come out the same year that braid did? Seems about right. Like, oh, those were at least within they're within a, year a calendar year of, of each other. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's get into like diving into our standout moments before we get to that. The big moment that everybody can't talk about that we're having a podcast so we can talk about it. But, uh, <laughs> So I was thinking back and it, it, it to what stood out to me initially was just just the art style and the fact that it wasn't all silhouette and the fact that you're still running around as a little boy and how much more graphic it tends to be just because they have a little bit of a color palette on it. Like it's still a stylized faceless world that's creepy. But honestly, I used to I laughed at people that were bothered by the violence in Limbo. I was bothered by the violence and inside any time that I got stuck and I died. It, it just, just that added that 
that added detail. Yeah, the as, detail. As small as it was, just made me not not want to die. <laughs> so yeah, was it? Be, I'm sorry, Aaron, but was it? Was it? Did it make more of an impact on you because of the realism of the world up to a certain point versus Limbo? Like, kind of always felt in kind of a fantasy world. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that. That's a gr- that's a great point. It definitely felt like yeah, it was in the real world and not not in limbo with fantastical creatures. And this might not even be a real person. Like it was, yeah. I, I think that's. It, it felt like I was controlling a little boy, a little boy that was lost and scared. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I cannot make it through this area in time, and this dog just keeps eating me. And, <laughs> It was, I think I died like six times just being eaten by a dog right in a row. And I was like, um, I don't like it when games don't like me, don't let me like dogs. And I hated those dogs. <laughs> My blood pressure rose every time I heard a dog bark in that game. Oh, it was, oh, ugh. that's awful. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I love dogs. The, the, the dogs and the death are the things that, that hit me, hit me first when I look back at the game. What, uh, what's the first thing that stands out to you, Aaron? And I think you pretty much nailed it with all the, the detail. And that's what I thought it was a, a very captivating game to watch. Just all that little bit of detail just really added so much because Limbo, what I remember about that is that it had that huge spider. Mm-hmm. And that spider would just stab and impale and bite your head off. And it was always like, oh, this is gross, but it's not really like I'm not disturbed by this. It's a video game. But uh, I watched the streamer. And he entered a warehouse and this guy noticed him in the background and the long run that the guy did from the background to the foreground just to get the kid and like strangle him yeah, out. Choked him out. I like, yeah. I like, what the fuck? Like, why did he just choke this kid out? I, I missed like the first third of the game or oh, something. Oh, you still don't so. know why he did it. No. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I have no idea. After finishing the game, you, you don't, I don't, Justin doesn't, nobody knows why he did it. There are theories. No, there are <laughs> so many, there so is. many theories. So many theories. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Like, I don't know. I was the dogs eating you is one thing, but they're animals and they've been trained that way. But I could not for for the life of me fathom why that grown man would have <laughs> would want to choke that kid out so violently. Like you've you've got him. You've got him under control. He's not going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> Also, I need to kill him as quickly as possible. Like, what the hell is going on in this world? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 if you go back to the beginning, like when you just kind of you start walking through the forest, and I'm like, holy, holy limbo. And then when you kind of peek out and you start to see that truck full of people, and you're just like, at first I thought they were like friends and family, and I honestly thought it was kind of like a, like maybe a World War II like era type of game, and and you know these are just people being kidnapped and put in prison camps and that sort of thing, and that was my first instinct and yeah. and I just wanted this kid to get away and it really surprised me that they weren't just going to capture the kid the fact that they were they would also just violently murder him this was very really unsettling can I change subjects here to sure. talk about something different than <laughs> murder try to, try to find something positive sure the yeah. so um, something that stood out to me and especially in the later levels um, was the ingenuity and the level design like uh, all of a sudden, you know, you're used to limbo, and I don't, rem- I don't know how limbo ends, but you're you're two D side scroller, and then you get in a submarine, and things kind of change a little bit, and then the water is upside down, and just, and then the level with the uh, the big blast, the sonic um, boom, the sonic boom level. Like I just, I really had a lot of fun with those levels, and. Uh, it, it was it was unique to me and um, of what I've played. The closest moment I had to joy was when I got in that submarine the first time. I was like, "This is now an ad- an adventure I can get behind. I'm exploring. Mm-hmm. I'm having fun. the The submarine was fun to control. I even found a friend underwater that wanted to hug, <laughs> hug me to death. No more there. murder. No more murder talk. Oh, no man. more murders. But no, yeah, I I I kind of forgot about like. As those puzzles matured, those three those three sections definitely stand out as the most fun. Even the, the sonic boom is that death is pretty incredible too. <laughs> getting blown into bits, um, yeah. <laughs> the, solving those puzzles were really fun. And I just think when compared to the level design and the puzzle design in Limbo, that's where Playdead kind of showed how far they've come. Because 
none of the puzzles felt impossible. Even the puzzles that were difficult were difficult because I was overthinking them. They yes. Just, so many times they were, they were so, they were so clever and so satisfying. Like I never, I never hit a wall with this game. It was always, I, the, the, the pace was constant. I was mm-hmm. just, you know, they weren't, I wasn't solving them at first glance, but I wasn't struggling through anything. And they were, you know, I just wanted to move on to the next thing. And that's why this game is so easy to play and get through in uh, one or two sessions too. Aaron, I don't know if you noticed this as much because I don't know how you were watching the stream if you had headphones on or whatever, but yeah, um, the sound design also is fantastic, especially with that sonic boom level. Like You were hearing the booms a long time before you ever got there. And it, it, for me, it was like this impending dread of, okay, what the hell is that going to be? Because <laughs> I'm just hearing these, this constant boom in the distance. I feel bad because I, I missed this whole Sonic Boom thing. I was like in and out of watching it. I, I watched the whole end section. We'll get to that. But uh, speaking to the sound design, the I saw the under the underwater segments, at, whether it was inverted water or not. But he entered this room and it was filled with water and the game went like dead silent to the point that the streamer was like, Where's the sound? The sound cut out? <laughs> like, what happened? And then we realized the camera's on the other side of the glass. So that's why you can't hear anything. Oh, wow. And I was like, wow, that's that's like a, a crazy attention to detail because he enters a, the next area, all the sound comes back. But like as he moved around, like the camera kind of panned out. And it's like, oh, you're not even in the room. The camera's not in the room. That's it's quiet. I remember that now that you mentioned that, that I thought so, I, I didn't try to rationalize it. I just thought it was a glitch or, yeah. or, or, or like I wasn't noticing it before because they. I mean, I don't. Really, is there music in this game, or is it all ambience? Like, no, there is. Like, the the music kicks on once you kind of solve the puzzle, so it kind of tells you that okay. you solved the puzzle. In some areas, I don't remember it happening in That's every right. area. That's right. But some of that more music stuff, non ambient sounds, would come through that. I guess another happy moment for me, uh, especially one that I was uh, super anxious for towards the beginning when you're running through the farm stuff, was when I came across those little chicks. Little chicks. And they were my like favorite little buddies, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feared from the, for them from the second they showed up on screen. Yeah, and then I get to this point with what I think is like a shredder, and I'm looking <laughs> at it, and I'm trying to figure out a way to I, advance. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Yes, it becomes <laughs> obvious there is no other way to do this, and I have to usher the. I have these chicks that trust me i have to usher this <laughs> them into this machine and oh thankfully it just kind of blew them all over the place and it was more of a, a, a i don't know what it was it was just blowing them around but it didn't kill them and i i couldn't have been happier and uh i think that probably <laughs> maybe gave me hope for the game and uh made a lot of the other more painful moments that much more painful but at least the chicks survived we, we've got we've always got that to hang on to Avoid the animal cruelty when you can, yeah. Man, man. Yeah, and then, if, and then the fish join you at the end, too, or near the end yeah. of the water level, and you're like, hey, fishies, fish more was, friends. Fish were friends. That was a good, like, uh, <laughs> that was a good moment, too, to help you realize that, you know, you can kind of swim infinitely, and they're your friends, and there are yeah. things in this world that like you, mm-hmm. I think. I, hopefully they weren't working for them <laughs> and just guiding you forward to the, your inevitable conclusion, but that's another theory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> but, um, yeah, should we talk about um, the girl from The Grudge? Or was it The Grudge? What are the... The Ring? The Grudge? The Ring. is. De- I think she's more the Ring girl. Yeah, because yeah. she was wet. She was climbing out of that well in the ring. God, I wanted her. Yeah. I wanted her to be my friend. Me I, too. I, and I wasn't... Like, even, even when she killed me the first time, when I'm in the submarine and... And she breaks through the glass. She breaks through the glass. I was, I was like, she killed me. But I was like, I, I did. I said, I was like, oh, she just wanted to give me a hug. <laughs> like she just wanted to be. <laughs> another, she wanted another to be close living to human being. Another living thing. She just didn't understand that yeah. I couldn't survive down here. But no, it becomes. You have several, a couple more run-ins with her, and she's she's fairly violent and terrifying. And some of the most tense moments I've had, I had with the game was trying to escape her. Uh, yeah, and then she kept popping up. That was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was in the middle of my happy place. I forgot about that. That was like I'm I'm enjoying these submarine puzzles and even getting out of the submarine and popping it through areas. But then yeah, then you started to look at that water a little more uneasily because you knew that she might be she might be close. Yep. Is this another one of those kind of like 
they've introduced a character or a bit of gameplay, but there's no explanation as to why. Oh yeah, there's 100%. this It's just this is happening now. Yeah. You don't know what her her reasoning is. You don't know that she's going to kill you the first time you see her. You just kind of have to die to find that. You out. just learn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wanna, and that's the whole game. The whole game is that way. Like you yeah. learn from dying. Yeah, I want to. I want to come back to the no exclamations thing a little bit later, but. Uh, Along those lines, I still don't know what to call the zombie people. And um, yeah, I don't know either. Like, I, do you think they were zombies in that first truck, Cole? Like when you see all the people in that op- in the opening scene when everybody's piled in the truck and the truck drives away. Yeah. Do you think they're like fully cognizant humans? Or? I think they. I think they are humans. I don't think they are zombies, but I think they're been some kind of controlled like mind control or something um to get them to that state Mm -hmm. because you know like even when even when you're in the uh, assembly line doing your you know marching along like there's still to me that seemed like there was still some life to them outside Mm of i thought at that point that i might be able to save them in some way yeah but that was i think other games have done assembly line type stuff like that but that was there was there was a lot of a lot more unknowns in that in that world as far as like I didn't know what could kill me I didn't know if like a laser would find mm. me through a spotlight or or something would fly in and get me or or that scorpion spear I, thing. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just slow. I love the way that they introduced your interactions with them because you see them from a distance. Yeah, you see them. I mean. If we're saying they were humans at the very beginning, just seeing them go through that progression at the same time as you're running forward, and then. Honestly, I didn't. I don't know how, how I felt about the mind control puzzles. Like just from, um, just controlling those other people. It was it was weird. It was, uh, um, I guess in Limbo you had a similar thing with that like that worm that would get stuck in your head. Oh uh, yeah. But there was something more direct about this because you had to put that hat on. Like you were making those choices, and then um, just ushering those people around there were a couple times where I thought I like made them fall off of a, a high point and they're all going to die from falling, but everybody ended up being okay. Um, it was just like, so you got a, there was a sense of like something tied you to them outside of thinking that they, you know, are living things or thinking that they're like non living things. I mean, because like for me, for to me, if you're, if you're thinking those are, those things are zombies, you're not going to care that they fall off the edge or do yeah. anything like that. And like mm-hmm. what you just said made it seem like you kind of cared that they did. I felt like I had a responsibility to them. And then I think, I think, yeah, I, at that point I wasn't sh- sure whether or not I could save them. So I have to hope that I could save them. So I don't yeah. want to cause them harm just so that I can get to the next room. Like using them as the I, lemmings I, puzzle kind of thing where yeah. you had to like unlock that door. That was cool. Yeah, that was, that was, that was, I mean, they were well executed puzzles, but it was just like, I hated kind of using them as tools at the same time, like compassion, uh, but there was some kind of, there was a sense of satisfaction every time I had them throw me though. Like I really liked (laughs) that. That was almost like a celebration. Like you're the champion, you're their favorite. Yeah. Yeah. The the way they would look. Yeah. That that was, um, that was cool. And And another thing was crazy is like, not just with them, but other things is they introduced like new things or new ways to get out of the doors and new, and they didn't, they don't overuse them. They, they use that kind of stuff very minimally. So it doesn't feel, um, boring, you know, like everything is fresh at all times. And the stuff that built that, like they'll introduce mechanics that'll build on each other that you'll use again Mm -hmm. later. And I mean, I, I, there's nothing I could change about the, the, the puzzle design. It's, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty perfect. (laughs) It seems succinct. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like it. There's no. There is no fluff in this game whatsoever. Nope. Like I just remember there being two or three just moments in Limbo where I knew how to solve the puzzle, but yeah. going through the motions was just not fun or not not satisfying. But um, there were a couple long walks in mm-hmm. uh, in Inside, but um, not nothing like that that felt like it broke the pace of the game. Um, I feel like it gave me a kind of a a chance to be like, okay, what do I need to do here? Mm -hmm. You know, the long walk was like, okay, help me figure out things and where I was rather than it feeling like tedious of, Oh my God, I have to travel this far. You have to walk. I think the only one, the only one I got stuck on was when you were trying to gather the like 20, um, Mm -hmm. helpers. We'll call them helpers. We're not going to call them zombies. (laughs) Um, Friends. Yes. 
And it used to, you, but it's got like multiple tiers to it where you find three or four of them here and three or four of them there, and you start to realize, oh, I'm gonna get twenty of them. Yeah. And off to the far left was where you would push the the big cart, and there were a couple helpers like in this pod that was hanging high up, and I could yep. not figure out. I went back there three times, couldn't figure out how to get up there, and then finally it clicked after I had everybody. But that was a long walk. That was yeah. much the the longest point. But um, yeah, I like those little. Those little boxes that would you'd, you'd propel them up and to get higher and mm-hmm. um, yeah that was uh yeah so so well designed very well um, I'm trying to think if there are any other any other moments before we got to get to the end here um nothing I think we covered most of the the standout yeah. stuff for, yeah I touched on what I saw yeah. um, like you yeah. said like doing the the march when you have to march within the the helpers. And then do their same action or wind up dead. Like I thought that was, you know, you, like you said, you've seen that in other games, but the way they did it and continued to do it for quite a long time, I thought was really cool. Um, but I, yeah, it's just I think just the, going through the different buildings and stages. Um, and for me, it was trying to figure out, okay, this game's called Inside. Am I trying to get <laughs> outside of something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that was break out. Like where am I going to break out? Head. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the this in the Sonic Boom area, like the one of the last portions of it is cli- climbing up, and there's this thing, like s- that's got this uh, the rotating thing. Yeah, the rotating thing that has an area that can block block the, you. And like the, the first way I tried to do oh, it, oh yeah, yep, failed. <laughs> but when it kind of came together and everything was perfectly timed, I, I just I I felt really satisfied with solving that and thought it was really cool that they pulled that off. Um, yeah, that was that was a really exciting sequence. Uh, yeah, like that, that whole the whole Sonic Boom thing was my favorite part of the game. Just it was the death was cool, the puzzles <laughs> were cool. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes, like I don't know if you guys found this out or maybe Aaron, the guy you were watching, did. But yeah, sometimes, like you said earlier, Justin, you overthink the puzzles. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to some when the, there's a switch in front of me, I'm trying to guess what it's gonna do. Yeah, and like try to make my play based on what I'm guessing, and oftentimes I was wrong. No, yeah. <laughs> Every single time I was wrong. You made it more complicated. You, yep. yeah, you're yep. gonna make this take yep. longer for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Every time. And then yeah, and, and a shout out to that whole all the inverted water stuff because that, that was that was gorgeous. So mm-hmm. that was really cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So then we we kind of build in to the the final section here, and up to this point, you're just you're just this lost boy running around trying to trying to escape. I'm I'm assuming you're just trying to get away because mm-hmm. you know there are yeah. there are portions where um, you know you're solving these puzzles, and I was like, dude, you could just stay here for a while. No one's really looking for you here. You're probably <laughs> safe for a bit. Um, Take a nap. And uh, to that end, I'll also say I really liked how the puzzles blur- blended together so well. Like it never mm-hmm. felt like I was the 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 gradation between this the different levels like blended together so well. Like I never felt I was finished with one thing and starting another. It was right. just all integrated. So that was awesome. Um, but then you kind of break into, for better or for worse, like a lab, and you start to see a lot more human actual humans, like people that are in control Not of themselves, control. like and, you appear to be, right. And they're not, and they're running around everywhere, and they're not chasing you, and that was weird to kind of realize. Especially yeah, there was one sequence where a dude's running beside you, and I just waiting for him to tackle yeah. the kid and murder him. And <laughs> we go through that terrible nightmare again, and they're just looking at. They're all running over this area to look at this big thing in a tank, and then so you kind of get into the water and come up below it and find just this mass of helpers that have become this blob and. So I'm I'm gonna free him. This is it. We're going to we're gonna we're going to end this nasty experiment, and everybody's gonna get out. And then the thing grabs you, and you become a part of the blob. And I <laughs> I had two I had two uh, distinct emotions at that point. One, I'm just like terrified for the kid. I am just yeah. beside myself, like oh my god, what are we gonna do? But then when you start to realize you now have control of the blob. My first instinct is I'm going to murder all of these people, <laughs> yes. and I was I was excited to do it. And like, so you break out of this tank, and the thing is stumbling across it. Like you barely know you're controlling this thing, but I couldn't help but just like the natural movement is to just be this be this monster just crushing <laughs> everything in your path, wrecking ball. And so while I'm like half of me is just completely like sad at the death of this kid because I basically treating it that way. I'm getting my revenge immediately. So it was just a, it was a weird counterbalance of, I don't even have time to mourn because we're getting our revenge. 
and and then it was just nonstop from that point on. It and it was it was a totally different game. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, Aaron, what was your thoughts like seeing that <laughs> on the stream? Oh my god! Like I I thought I knew a vague description of what this game was. I thought I had come to terms with, oh, you know, it, it's Limbo 2. And as soon as that blob absorbs the boy, like, there are parts of the game I missed. I watched that entire thing. <laughs> like, just <laughs> mouth agape going, what just happened? Like, he's, people were, like, screaming and running. Like, uh, dudes are getting crushed. Uh, there's, a, there's a point in the section that I thought was oh. hilarious where there's, like, a guy in a room trying to unlock a door and it, so you can get out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like oh, that like, seems like the logical thing to do. Like, I'd, I'd willingly help this thing you get away you from me. You couldn't get too close to the door or he'd run away. So you oh, yeah. had to, like, find the distance for him to unlock <laughs> yeah. the door. Yeah, you had to stay far enough away that he could unlock that door. And then he was like, get out, please. Yeah. <laughs> I did, like right after that, I think it was right after that, or maybe before, where you just like completely squish a guy that explodes. Yes, and I was like, <laughs> yes, that was satisfying. As the well. subtle, the subtle, their subtle integration of gore, like they, yeah. it was, it's as graphic as it can be, but used in minimal amounts. And yeah, I was just mouth agape, like Aaron, just like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? I did not expect that. I, I knew I was like, okay, I'm at the end. This is gonna be. This is how the game wraps up, but I still don't really know why or what or that. I mean, I just what all that happened. I felt like I was playing the rest of that just on inertia, like it was just yeah. I wasn't even yeah. in control. Like yeah. you're still solving puzzles though, and they're still yeah, interesting. And like yeah. I almost set the blob on fire once. I was pretty sure, and just yeah, like, yeah. Um, and that stick, that like long board puzzle was cool, mm-hmm. where you had like the the door oh, yeah. opener above you. Like that stuff were, is all really well. They made the physics of that thing work and like mm-hmm. disturbing, but like realistic. At least they felt realistic ways. And yeah. And again, the sound design like was really, really gross. <laughs> like you oh, was... groaning and squishes. Yeah, and all the fucking, gnarly. The, oh, because you, yeah, they're like, there like people, people are alive yeah. in there and they're just yeah. yelling and like, mm-hmm. oh. and groaning and grunting and, and groaning pain. and slapping and crashing. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was this weird combination of so many gross feelings <laughs> in like a 15, 20 minute span of time. Like I never felt any better until it, it even when it was over. I was, I was, I was say, like, what just happened? I was like, and then all of a sudden it is over. It's just over. And I, I have to have to go back and watch my archive, but I'm pretty sure like you break out of the place and you're just on this beach or cliff. You're yeah, outdoors. You're safe yeah. and you just stop moving. And I think I just made some, Oh, I guess that's the end. And then the and then credits get, hit. Then a, yeah. slow, a slow zoom for about a minute and yeah. then credits. And you're just and like, credits. what? Because I'm like still like, okay, is, am I supposed to move here? Because you, nothing's really happening. And Yeah. And so like recording this, like my reactions as they're happening, like I had no idea. So what, we all got the, we it. all got the bad ending apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's, the ending's always bad. How? Would, no, there's how? another. There's another ending. Oh, there's a, there's a, is it a separate ending or? Yeah, it's a separate uh, ending. If you unlock, okay. yeah, it's different. Okay. You do all the the secret like UFO looking light things. Okay. And then you get and, a separate ending. So we got the ending, in my opinion. Um, but <laughs> I like in those moments, I I I can't I can't pull myself away to even look at it from like a hundred feet to try to figure out what the hell happened. I just remember being like, well, I mean, I guess that's a story you can tell, but you didn't, they didn't really tell it very much. (laughs) Nothing had an explanation, but at the same time, it's kind of okay too. Yeah. Like it it makes it a much more memorable universe with, with, and much easier to talk about and just have in people's interpretations, which is cool. But in the moment it was just like, I, I, I was kind of disturbed by like picturing the, the, the design process of this game of like, this is the story that you want to tell. Like it, it just felt really bizarre. And then you look back at like, and seven eighths of this game is just limbo too. <laughs> <laughs> and then you throw in that really random, awesome, weird ending. And it's always going to stick out my memory at this point. Like it's kind of yeah. one of those, I can't decide if the game's any good or not as a game. Like it's really well designed. The puzzles are awesome. The puzzles are satisfying but I don't know if I'm going to put myself through that experience again at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it seems hard to play a second time. 
I don't know. I don't, I don't, I think like for me, it's like, I want to go on see that other ending and play through those puzzles again, because I thought it was very satisfying. Cool. I mean, that's, that's fair. I was just, I was trying to like relate it back to like just other experiences that were, you know, more linear and just completely narrative focused that just leave everything so open ended or not and unexplained. And, um, I'm trying to. I think I'm going to remember it for its open endedness rather than like the the moment to moment gameplay stuff. But do you think like so? As you were talking a minute ago, talking about like there's no really story, and that's the story they wanted to tell, and it's interesting that they told it that way. But I'm <laughs> going to relate it to Game of Thrones, where the most the the most interesting and the most fun people have with Game of Thrones is talking about their theories and sure. all mm-hmm. of that stuff. And so I think. Huh transitioning that to inside i think the 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 tale or the, or the history of the game the length of the game and people's minds might last longer because of the conversations that are being had around the definitely. game definitely definitely especially in a in a a time when it's so hard for indie games to stand out from one another i think that's a valid point but i started even thinking like this game would benefit more if it was spread out a little bit more because I almost compare this to like playing through firewatch. Like I consumed it all in one swoop and yes, we, I can go on and have those conversations about people's different experiences and different theories and that, and that sort of thing. But it's already also already over. It's not like I'm waiting. I can't, True. Like right now it's fun in Game of Thrones because we're in between seasons and we can yeah. there's all kinds of things there's, you can get yeah. caught up on with people but also all the all the theories you can let play out. Oh, that's a that's a good point too. I mean I, that, that doesn't solve inside but it's no. a, it, it's like because it's so it's so great at being self-contained but at the same time like yeah uh-huh. like if they had one more like a DLC thing just hanging out there in 3 months we're going to do something unexpected that would almost be a fun reason to keep having those conversations versus you know i feel like i'm having this conversation with you guys to almost wash my hands of this game and move on like mm. um not because yeah. it's bad but it's just like it it is what it is and i'm not i i also know from consuming so many other so much other media that like, i'm not going to get those answers either would would if it had a if it had a story that it told us clearly um like other games do mm-hmm of the same genre or whatever would would we be talking about it right now i I feel like with this one that that twist at the end with the blob would that's going to last a long time no matter no matter any exposition that happens happens after that point or before so that helps it and then the puzzle design makes it stand out but like but really it's the it's you remember the blob and you remember all these questions that you have, <laughs> yeah. um, which is, I mean, it's unique in the video game space. Mm-hmm. So I can't, Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not here to say whether that's a positive or a negative thing, but it's just like, um, I don't, I guess I don't know what I'm supposed to get out of it. <laughs> and, 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 and play dead's I being, play dead's being smart and not talking about oh, yeah. the story oh, yeah. as well. Oh man. Yeah. I, want, I think it's, I think it's good not to talk about the story. And as the the person here who only watched it and didn't actually experience it, I definitely see myself down the line, you know, give myself some space from what I watched and what we're talking about. And I I think I will play through this myself. And then I'll be like, yeah, I felt really weird when this happened. And this is a great moment and there's no explanation for it. And I, I I think it'll be fun for me, even though I've watched most of it. Yeah, I think you'll, I think experiencing some of the moments within the game versus watching it will definitely make an impact on you, even if you play it, you know, here in the next week or so. I think yeah. it still will, um, still will have that impact. So, Cole, you glad you played inside? Oh yeah, I loved it. Awesome, awesome. Loved I, it. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't avoid it. Like the way people were talking about it, and Aaron kind of talked to me right after you saw after you uh, yeah <laughs> i was on the fence at that point i was like i don't know if i'm in the mood for uh, this game i knew i could fit it in but like it became urgent after talking with aaron and then kind of being curious enough to follow up on other reviews to be like all these people are just so anxious to find somebody they can talk about it with mm-hmm. and, and i was like well i already know i can talk about it talk about it with aaron and some, <laughs> yeah. somewhere along the lines i convinced cole so that's a bonus <laughs> I had to talk about that blob. Yeah. It's all about the blob. A boy in his blob. blob. But I mean, <laughs> a boy in his blob. I like these kind of converging points in video games where these these games where people can kind of 
come together and and because it's so self-contained and so short and but also so good that there's a reason to talk about it because there's so many other games we're playing we're all in different portions of the game or finished the finished it a long time ago or haven't touched it or what, whatever like this is this is something that i can actually you know i get excited to talk about game of thrones with people that are all caught up and like yep. being able to have a video game moment like this um i think um is always a good thing no matter the questions that i have about play dead's original intentions or the or, or their plan for this game um it's gonna it's gonna stick with me no matter what outside of some of the the graphical choices and sound design or music i think like do you because it'll be in those categories do you think it's going to be in uh near around your top 10 for game of the year at the end of the year me me probably me probably not um um just uh Mm -hmm. i don't think it'll have that 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 long lasting effect as far as i tend to go with things that give me more um more of these moments just from purely a gameplay perspective so um and again if you go back to like narratives that i really like that elevate the game uh, it doesn't have that side either just because it's so open-ended in that regard. But if we just go for like um, a sort yeah, of best, a moment. mo- best moments of the year, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, it, it definitely gets a nomination, I think, moment-wise. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll get some attention and it deserves it. And I think everybody, mm-hmm. it's one of those games that like, I mean, with Firewatch this year, it's just like I, everybody should play that because it, it's, it's so self-contained and so easy to get in and out of and it's a, an experience that'll stick with you. And, um, I'm all for that. No matter if it's video games or books or movies or any time of any, anything, uh, on the entertainment side. So I think that's it for play deads inside. Anybody, anybody else got any final thoughts or final words for the game? I need to go play firewatch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. And then you can revisit our other spoiler night. Yep. Uh, yeah, you should I do wondered. that. Go ahead. I was going to say, I wonder how many people for Halloween are going to be this blob. <laughs> we can get how many it. people does it take to be one blob? <laughs> Too many. Too many. You're going to get real intimate with your friends. I think if you if you try to be this blob as your Halloween costume, you have to make somebody play the whole like game in real life to get to that point to dress up as the blob. Yeah, you which, just play the whole game. Which appendages of yours do you want sticking out from the blob? Or do you want to be, do you want your arms out or do you want your legs out? Oh, I think arms. I think yeah, arms. You, you want your arms out. You want to be part of the the, the long. Gra- you want to be part of the grabby, not the runny. Yeah, you <laughs> want to be the runny. Like that. That was awkward. But the grabbing stuff, like smash that wall open. Yeah, yeah. that's what you want. Play dead's grabby. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, gentlemen, for uh, talking through inside. Uh, horrible night we'll be back with some more podcasts next week you can check out all of our friends of the podcast on horriblearena.com and when we have another game to talk about spoiler night we'll be back as well so we'll see you then thanks see ya we couldn't stop talking and we started talking about theories that we came across for inside so here you go the blob is a tumor and the the boy is a red blood cell like on his way to fight the tumor and then he becomes a white blood cell to attack it and by getting in there like it's removing the tumor so it's like a a story of like surgery and cancer and shit this is a cancer game yeah i mean he's was i mean the the titles in red and not and not white font and he's wearing the red shirt and like Uh, until the end until he joins there's nothing there's nothing in that game that isn't deliberate yeah oh my god i thought that theory was really Uh, good yeah i thought i've heard the theories around like and I feel like the other ending has something to do with this too, but of, of just like, they're trying to break your feeling of control. Like you are, you yeah, the mind control. You are it, like, you are inside mm. the kid. You're making him do the things. And then now he's making them do the things. And like, yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. like that too. Yeah. And yeah. like getting the tumor out is like taking that mind control away from you. Yes. Yeah. And so the whole okay. thing is in your head. And then there were other theories that this is actually like the prequel to Limbo, that it's actually the same kid. And, uh, and because that's he, that's be, tougher for me to get behind there. Because he kind of died in this game, then he now he's he goes to Limbo. Yeah, but I feel like but, Limbo, Limbo like had like something with his. Sister yeah, Limbo's or trying right? to get his sister back. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, and, they sh- and and I didn't say it, but they should never explain it. <laughs> no, I they don't should think never. They ever do. No, I hope they never do either. 
that tumor explanation though holy shit I, if that's what, what it actually is that's crazy so all the other people are white blood cells I guess so and they're all trying to stop you because you're the red and what are they what are they making zombies what are they I think those might be like cancerous cells I don't okay. know Huh. Talking to the other, ooh, so then I was like working with cancer. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe they're vaccines or antibodies or something. And like maybe maybe those things are part of the cure, but like the people thing, I don't know. I'm just yeah, speculating yeah. at this point now. But Or just like, I don't know. All the, and, the, and the guy might have explained it all. That's just the part I remember that it was like a tumor. Okay. Like a red I think of all stuff. the like the trials that the cure would have to go through to get around your – yeah. Because now those yeah. dogs. Okay, now we can like the dogs because the dogs are on the white blood cell team and trying to. Although you're the cure, they shouldn't attack you. Yeah. Those dogs are mean. <laughs> yeah, dogs. And they just lingered on those shots. That's not cool. But but then <laughs> what the fuck are those robots that shot those things? What What's are those? <laughs> what are those? What are those? <laughs> okay, like if I if I dive into these theories. And then try to play the game from a, with a different perspective. I could totally play it again. I think yeah. that's what I need. That's what I need to be able to go back. There's a reason play. to play. Yeah. But at the same time, like I w- it wasn't fun exploring for those those little light things that you unplug. Like I stumbled across a few of them, but it, like I don't know. It was never. I mean, it was. They gave you hints with the yellow cabling everywhere. Right. Right. But. Yeah, I stumbled f- across a few. Actually, I got most of them. I think I'm missing three or four. Because then, yeah. did you f- did you find the big th- the big one? Did you go see the big one? No. Okay, so, so the one at the end. Um, once you get all of them, I guess that all the cables are leading to this giant one, and then you pull that, I guess, and then um, maybe that's how you get the other ending. But in that room, there's like this board with, it's like a switchboard with all the cables going into it. And so you see which ones you've missed because they're, yeah. they've all, they've all been lit up the ones you have, which is really okay. cool. I thought that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, probably need to go, go do that or, uh, or watch YouTube for that. That'll be so watch YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It was, it was cool though. Glad I played it. Good shit. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I'll play it. Yeah. I'll play it.